Give it a shot. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Excellent. Happy Easter, everyone, and welcome. Uh, thanks for coming and being here with us this morning, and I want to give a special thanks uh, to the brave souls who came out at 6 o'clock this morning for our sunrise service. Uh, you know, hey, if you're going to be a go-getter, go get them. But <laughs> thanks for getting up early and joining us for that time. Uh, if you have not met me yet, my name is Pastor Bill Jones. I'm the pastor here at Bethlehem Stonepile and at Springvale United Methodist Church. Um, and this time last year, we were not able to gather um, together, but we are able to gather together this year, and it is such a wonderful thing, and it's good to see um, faces coming back or faces that haven't been here since uh, the pandemic started, and looking forward to seeing that more and more. And if this is your first time here, welcome. Thanks for being with us and joining us for this Easter morning. We're so thankful to have you and so thankful to be able to celebrate our risen Savior together this morning. So I do have a, some announcements real quick. One, uh, we are having communion service today. Uh, because of COVID restrictions and everything, I can't give you the bread that I have. However, back in Strayer Hall on the back table, there's a bottle of juice, there's some cups, there's also some plates and some saltines. If you want to get some of those and have those available, or if you brought your own communion elements, when we get to that point, you'll pull out your crackers or bread, pull out your juice, or um, in the case of Isaac in the back, water. Um, he said it'll turn into wine. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but go ahead and get those and have those available, and we'll share communion together. So when I lift the bread and break it, you'll lift yours and break it. When I lift the cup and bless it, you'll lift yours as well, and we'll go from there. The other thing is, you may have noticed there's some beautiful flowers up here today for Easter, and they smell wonderful. Um, so if you ordered a flower, please feel free to get that after the service. Don't come up now. Leave them there for now. They look beautiful for the service, but feel free to come and get your flower and take it home with you uh, and decorate your homes with that. And let's see. Um, just so you know, at the end of the service, there's going to be a hymn. And it may be uh, unfamiliar to you when you just look at the title and the words, but the tune you will know right away. So it's just knowing the tune and being able to sing along to it, and it's a hymn called Easter People, Raise Your Voices. Um, so you'll know it, and Darla will play it through one time, and then we'll go ahead and sing it all together, but I guarantee it'll be easy. You'll get to it. Next Sunday, we are continuing um, our 200th anniversary celebration for Bethlehem Stonepile, uh, and we will have a presentation uh, that will be done on that day. Uh, so if you've been following along all the different things that we've been trying to do to lift up the history of the church and celebrate it, uh, don't miss next Sunday. It'll be a wonderful time to come and join in with that. All right. So that's all the announcements I have, but I know Danny has an announcement, so I'm going to bring her up. Good morning. So this is the last day that we have the sub sale for praise team open. So I'll be collecting the form right after Sunday school today. If you still need to pay me, you can bring me the money today or you can bring it next Sunday when they come in. Next Sunday we'll have um, pick up right after Sunday school in Strayer Hall. Also, if you have a form and you don't have it with you, you can come see me for my phone number and you can just send me a picture by tonight. That's perfectly fine with me. Thank you. All right, so typically at this point, I would ask you to rise and pass a piece of Christ, but not yet. Don't do it yet. Um, I have a fun video to show you just to kick us off for this morning. I want this to be kind of fun, light, and celebratory as we go through the service today. So if you ever wanted to know about Easter, you should ask kids. And if you don't understand why, check this out. After Jesus died, they put Jesus in a tomb. They wrapped him with some white paper. They put a big stone around it and placed guards in front of the tomb to let nobody go in. He was just waiting for the three days. He's probably drinking soda while eating hot Cheetos. <laughs> he would probably play 
games like Candyland and then have a party by himself. The okay. Easter Bunny was hiding behind a tree. <laughs> he probably went out there and just, just throw eggs everywhere. And then he's going to say, there's one money egg, so you better find it. You can get some money. Three days later, there was a big earthquake. <laughs> I think we should go away somewhere safe. It's like I'm getting out of here. The earth is shaking. Run for your lives. <laughs> and the guards ran off because they got scared. And then on Sunday, Mary and some of her friends came with some spices. But when they got there, the tomb was empty. His clothes only was there. Then an angel came and said, Don't be afraid. Jesus has risen from the dead. Go tell the go tell everyone. Go tell the good news. Mary and her friends went and told the disciples. She said, Jesus has risen from the dead. Guys, guys, Jesus has risen from the dead. And the disciples didn't believe them. No! That couldn't happen. Jesus can't raise from the dead. Uh, I don't believe it until I see it. But all of a sudden, Jesus, Jesus just came, just was there. I am Jesus. I am the. I'm the. I am the Son of the Lord God, and I am Jesus, your friend. And then the disciples said, "Jesus, it's you!" Yay! Jesus is alive! Totes cool. Jesus, before he left to heaven, he said, I have done what I have come to do. And then he rose, and he was going up to heaven. His disciples were crowded around him. The disciples said, holy guacamole! I can't believe Jesus really flew. That's awesome! Now what? Let's go tell the news. You know, that was, that was perfect. Excellent. Now, if you would please rise. We can't shake hands and hug and everything like we'd like to, but we can wave and share the joy of a risen Savior with everyone. All right, please rise again if you are able and join us in our call to worship. You'll see the words on the screen. It's also in your bulletin. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Darkness has been vanquished. The brilliant light of hope has come. Come, let us worship and celebrate the good news. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Amen. Please remain standing and join us in our opening hymn, which is Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
Um, our service where we have the opportunity to share our joys and our concerns with one another as we present them to God we also share them with one another so we can be praying for and with one another through all the things that we may be facing um, the one joy I want to lift up uh, this year is this has probably been one of the greatest holy weeks I can remember of sharing it with all of you from the Easter party last Saturday to the um, Palm Sunday service and the journey to the cross drive through experience and then the Monday Thursday service and Good Friday service and this morning with the sunrise service um, and it was so many people just coming out and being a part of making it all happen of presenting a wonderful hospitality to the community to come and hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ in a powerful way um, I'm very thankful to be a part of this congregation um, and to be here and to be with people that offer such wonderful ministry. So thank you all for being a wonderful blessing, uh, not just to me, uh, but to our church and to our community as well. So I lift that joy up today. What other joys or concerns do you have this morning that you would like to share? Melody. Melody. Wow. Ed? Okay, so prayers for Ed, Melody's uh, brother, who was taken to the hospital today for a kidney stone. So pray for him that all goes well and that healing takes place soon. <laughs> so, yeah, Tina. Okay, ex thank you. Uh, so, Please pray for Janet Eaton this week. She's going to be having eye surgery, so we're praying that that all goes well um, and that her healing comes along well. So we're looking forward to hearing more about that. Yes? Okay. Okay. I'm so glad to have you. Yeah, that deserves a clap. And you're not the only one. There's other people that, yes, exactly, uh, that first time back in a while. Agnes, correct? Absolutely. Excellent. Yes, and it's good to see. <laughs> it's so good to see faces that we haven't seen for a while and to be able to do that. But uh, prayers for your daughter-in-law, and her name is Sarah. Sarah um, and members of her family who have come down with COVID. Um, it's not gone yet, uh, but it's still good to see uh, the numbers trending in a positive direction and for just that sign of hope at the end of the tunnel, that light that's there for us to be able to return uh, to things like this even more. So we're thankful for that. Yes. Okay, so prayers for your son-in-law um, who was diagnosed with COVID and he has pneumonia also. And what was his name again? Michael Nisley. Michael Nisley, okay. Laurie. My brother David Okay, so prayers for David who's trying new treatment for cancer down at Johns Hopkins and we're praying that it will be successful and that God will strengthen him through that whole process. So, yeah, Glenda. Okay. Understood. So prayers for Donald, who's coming home Wednesday. He'll be continuing therapy and healing at home, uh, but that means there's going to be a lot on Glenda, too, so please pray for her. And if there's anything we can be doing to help or support in any way, please let us know. Okay. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We are blessed and thankful to be here, so thank you. Are there others? Yes. For Jane? Jay, okay, definitely. So please keep Jay in your prayers. 
and I ask that God be present with him. Others. All right, let us turn to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this Easter morning. We give you thanks for the reminder that we worship a risen Lord. Lord, we love you. We're thankful for all that you do for us, all that you've done for us. The great miracle that is the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, that offers up forgiveness, redemption, eternity for all of us. Lord, as we gather this morning, we lift up to you our joys, the joys of wonderful services and people from the community coming out and hearing the good news of your word. We give you thanks for um, members of the church that are feeling comfortable to be able to start coming back and being part of the congregation once again. And Lord, we ask that you be present with our, our loved ones and family members that are still not yet there, that are worshiping with us from home and hopefully tuning in this morning and joining us in this Easter service, even online. Lord, we lift up to you our loved ones and, and family members and friends that are battling illness and battling uh, cancer and other, other health concerns and ask that you be present with them. We ask that you be with our loved ones that are dealing with other pressures and issues going on in their life, that you, you allow your presence to come in, that your Holy Spirit surround them in whatever it is that they're going through and that you care for them. Lord, as we go through the rest of this Easter, we ask that you fill us with the knowledge of what this day truly means. Help us to take that all in and be the disciples who you are calling us to be, to lift up praise and to lift up prayer. With that in mind, we now lift up the prayer that your Son taught us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One thing we're not, we have not been able to get started up again is a choir, but we're looking forward to the day that we can have our choir again and have anthems sung. Uh, but we, I found a good one for this morning that I thought was really cool. This is a choir piece called Risen, and it'll be on your screen. Darkness filled the sky the day that Jesus died in agony upon the bitter cross. They took his body down and laid it in a tomb. His friends believed that everything was lost. But when the third day darkness turned to light for Mary heard her name and saw the living Christ risen to set the captives free risen to ransom you and me to bind up every broken heart to conquer
Isn't that a cool piece? It's brand new for this Easter that came out. Children's choir, the youth and everything, I'm just planting some seeds out there, you know? How cool would it be to be able to have that? So this is a time I want to be able to share a little bit with the children. You don't have to come up. Um, you can hang out where you are. Um, but I want to take some time to be able to talk with you. And I was so happy when I saw this as the backdrop. And I, Carol made this, correct? So the butterfly and everything? Yeah. Awesome. It is so gorgeous. And I love the symbol of the butterfly uh, for Easter. And to help me explain that a little bit, I'm going to invite Christina up. And just to give you a little background and to embarrass her a little bit more, because that's just what I do. Um, this is my son Nathan's girlfriend. This was her first time coming home to meet his family and stuff like that. I uh, had not been here before, and I have made her do stuff in every single Holy Week service that she's been home for. So she is an awesome trooper in, in helping me in so many ways. So I'm very thankful for Christina and going along with all this craziness. And if we haven't scared her away, you might see her again. So, you know, <laughs> we'll see how all that goes. But so kids, what do we have here? What does that look like? What is it? Caterpillar, absolutely. So a butterfly starts off like this, right? That's what it looks like in the beginning, and it's kind of common and everything else. And sometimes we kind of feel like that, like, is there anything really special about us? We're just sort of common and everything else. But the one thing that we learn from, from Scripture and from our understanding of God is that all of us are a work in progress, that God is working on us and in us and through us to transform us into something else. And that time sometimes can feel like when we go into what's known as a chrysalis. And the miracle takes place as the caterpillar transforms into... There you go. Excellent. Transforms into a chrysalis. And it's cool for today because what happened to Jesus? He went from being Jesus, fully human, fully divine, Going into a tomb, kind of like a chrysalis. It's nice. Huh? It's caught. It's, caught. It's, awesome. it's very cool. So anyway, we've been working on the zippers. Yes. When they work, they're really good. There we go. Excellent. And it goes kind of like that and hangs from a tree. Has anybody ever seen a chrysalis before hanging from a tree? Absolutely. But the really cool thing is while it's in there, there's something taking place. Just like when Jesus was in the tomb, there was something taking place. There was something more going on, that it wasn't the ending, that it was the start of a new beginning, that God was making something new in that process. And what we see after a caterpillar is done in its chrysalis is something really transformational. And if we get the right zipper, yep, you did. Awesome. It comes out and turns into a beautiful butterfly. Isn't that cool? I found that, you know, I always have to get toys and knickknacks, so I found that and couldn't resist or whatever. So that's a much prettier butterfly, but this is a cool butterfly too. Um, and what's interesting with the butterfly is the wings and everything else that take place don't come just automatically. It actually comes through the struggle. The caterpillar has to make a small opening in that chrysalis and force its way through. And in the process of forcing its way through, it pushes all the fluids and everything down into the rest of the body, which spreads out into the beautiful wings and helps it to become the butterfly. If you were to open up the chrysalis and just pull it out, it would not form. It wouldn't have the wings. It wouldn't be able to fly. So sometimes we go through stuff in our life. We go through struggles. Like I said, we're a work in progress. But sometimes those struggles help us to become exactly who God is calling us to be. So my hope is that God continues to work on you, just like he's working on me, and that in that process, we become exactly who God desires for us to be. So that's my prayer and my hope for you. And thank you, Christina. I'll even let you take the butterfly back with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who died, went into a tomb, and rose again. 
We give you thanks for the kind of an example of that as we watch caterpillars go into uh, cocoons or chrys go into the, um, the process of the chrysalis and come out on the other side as beautiful butterflies. And we're reminded in that that we go through that same process in our life, that we are a work in progress and that you are making us into something new, something even better, something made in your image. Amen. All right. And now I would like to take this time to say a prayer over the gifts and offerings that have come in. And it's not just the financial gifts. Those are so important for helping us to continue and run as a church and to be able to do the ministries we're able to do. But your involvement, your participation is also a tremendous gift and a much needed one for the ministries that we do. So we want to celebrate those each week and say a blessing over each one. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for the many gifts and offerings and tithes that have come in. We know how greatly important they are for the ministry and the function of the church. Lord, I also want to lift up to you the many hands and feet in this congregation that do so much to make ministry happen and uh, to, to do wonderful things for the church. We ask that you bless each and every one, that you multiply them so that we can become the church that you would have us be and become that more and more each day. Amen. Would you please rise, if you're able, and join us in the doxology. standing and join us in our hymn of preparation, He Lives.
seated. Good morning. I'll be reading to you this morning from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead and on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead, He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our second reading this morning is from Matthew, and that is uh, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, At dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. May you bow your heads in prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray today we have a better understanding of what you've done for us, the love you gave us and the price you paid. And today we just sing hallelujah and praise you for you have risen. I pray that we listen to Pastor Bill's message just to get a better intake of how like you risen from the dead and how you love us so. And I pray over people who have not heard the message and how they know that they are saved. And just let us sing rejoice. In Jesus' name, amen. So you have probably heard the phrase, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Anybody ever heard that before? 
Well, we've endured Good Friday, and Sunday is here. It is Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Very good. Today I would like to talk about the experiences of those who discovered that Jesus had risen and what that means for all of us. So if we take a look at Mary at the tomb, what did she experience? She got there expecting to find Jesus' body. She got there expecting to be able to take care of all the rituals that they weren't able to do in haste uh, when they had to bury him on Friday. And what she found instead was an empty tomb. What she found was an angel. And then she also encountered Jesus. And what did she think he was? The gardener, correct? Where have you laid him? Let me know so that I can go and take care of him, correct? But then the gardener said, Mary. And she knew who it was then, but she didn't know who it was before. It was unrecognizable to her what she was experiencing, who she was seeing and everything else. She did not recognize him. Keep that in mind. But then what did Jesus tell her? Go and tell the disciples. Go and let them know, right? As we hear in the Matthew text today, go to Galilee, tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and I will meet them there. And then as we go on, we take a look at Peter and John and some of the other disciples, um, minus Thomas. He wasn't there the first time, and he'll be a sermon for another time, so we'll talk about Thomas later. But when Jesus first appeared, they kind of thought he was a ghost, They weren't quite sure at the moment, but then it became real to them that this was their Savior. This was Jesus. And he also, in the Matthew text, told them to go and tell the other disciples as well. Notice this. Don't recognize him, and then he tells them to go and tell others, right? Seeing a pattern? And then one of my favorite stories is about the two on the road to Emmaus. One of them was named Cleopas. This is such a great story. Two of the disciples are on the road to Emmaus. They witnessed everything on Good Friday. They're downcast. They're they're talking with each other, worried about what is going to happen next, uh, lamenting everything that had taken place. And then Jesus comes alongside of them, right? Did they recognize him? No. No. Once again, they didn't recognize him, and he's sharing with them, and he's talking with them, and he actually opens up Scripture to them, and they say that weren't your, wasn't your heart on fire? Wasn't your heart warmed as he opened up the Scripture to us? But it wasn't until they gathered for dinner together, and Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, that they actually recognized him and understood who he was. And what did they do after that? They ran to the disciples, and they let them know what they had seen. And the disciples were still reeling with the fact that they had heard from Mary and the other women that Jesus had risen, and trying to work out all of that. Imagine the excitement that must have been taking place, as well as the confusion that must have been taking place on that day as they were hearing this new information and trying to ponder and understand how all that worked. But then we also fast forward ahead, and the disciples went back to fishing. And Peter's out on the boat with the other disciples, and they hear a voice coming from shore. And it says, how's the fishing going? Cast your nets on the other side of the boat. Kind of reminiscent of something they had heard three years before. And they get an amazing catch. And it says that Peter finally recognizes that this is Jesus. Takes off his clothes and jumps in the water and swims to shore. And has anybody ever seen the movie Forrest Gump? All right. And there's that scene where Forrest Gump sees Lieutenant Dan on the side. And he jumps off his shrimp boat and goes swimming toward him. I imagine that as Peter jumping off the boat and swimming to shore. Because, it, you know, for me, it's comedy. I, I know, you know, I look at that and I just laugh every time because Peter jumps off the boat, he swims to shore, the other disciples gather up the fish, 
they take the boat into shore, and based on the way the scripture reads, it sounds like they both get to shore at the same time. And then Peter's got to go help them with the fish. It's like had he stayed on the boat, he'd have gotten there to shore at the same time and could have helped them then. But, you know, that's just me. I find comedy in things. But they didn't recognize him. They didn't recognize him. And then they gather together and they have a meal. And that's where he has the conversation with Peter and asks him to feed my sheep. That he redeems everything that Peter had gone through before and gives him an assignment to go forward. So we have this issue where Jesus has risen, but people aren't necessarily recognizing him right away. They're not noticing exactly who he is, but he is present and he is there. So what do these stories say to us? All of these people that we're hearing about, they knew Jesus. They knew what he looked like. They knew what he sounded like. They knew what he smelled like. They even knew his mannerisms. They knew the way that he acted. But not one of them recognized him at first. So this means for us that we too should, could, and ought to expect to meet, see, and experience the risen Christ in our own lives. You see, he was not just risen for them, he was risen for all of us as well. Scripture talks about entertaining angels unaware, correct? Well, what if we've been entertaining Jesus at different times in our life and weren't aware? What if we were like the two on the road to Emmaus that are hearing things open up and having our hearts warmed and not noticing maybe that that was Jesus with us for that time, opening things up to us? How incredible would that be? You see, when Jesus died on Good Friday, one of the things that happened after he died was the curtain was torn in the temple. Up until that time, the curtain was that separator between people and God. God stayed in the Holy of Holies, and only the top priest could go in. And that's a whole other story where they had to tie a lanyard around their leg with bells and stuff like that and let them go in in case they got there and God killed them and you'd have to pull them out. Well, it, yeah, it's a story for another time, but it's a great story. Um, but there was this curtain that separated people from the Holy of Holies, and it says that on Good Friday that that curtain was torn. Well, why was that curtain torn? Because Jesus was to be the, the, the Paschal Lamb. Jesus was to be the sacrifice for us for all time. He was to be the one who brought about salvation. He was to be the one that would bring us back into full relationship with God once again. To end the separation that sin had caused and allow us that opportunity to be fully in relationship with with our God. So with the curtain torn, it meant that there was nothing separating us anymore from our God. So that we could have these experiences of Jesus with us. We could have a personal relationship with God. When we pray, we don't de need an intermediary. We don't have to have a priest that goes in and is present with God for us, that God wants that full relationship with us and jesus invited us into that by being the sacrifice but also being the redeemer of all of us i want us to notice one other distinction earlier in the gospels when people witnessed jesus and his miracles he would tell them tell nobody don't tell anybody what i've done right but notice what's happening after the resurrection. They're being told, whether it's by angels or by Jesus, go and tell. Go and tell. In fact, there's even more conversation at that point of how the disciples are the witnesses of Jesus Christ. They are the ones to carry forth the story, to carry forth what God is doing. So go and tell is something that we should be thinking about and pondering and taking on for what we are called to do as well. 
See, we also must go and tell. It's important that other people hear the story. It's important that other people hear what Christ has done. It is necessary for us to be those voices that go and tell. We need to go and tell that Christ is risen. We need to go and tell that he is alive. We need to go and tell that we have experienced him and how. That is such an important thing. For the two on the road to Emmaus, their experience was recognizing him in the breaking of the bread. What's your experience? Where have you encountered Jesus Christ in your life? What was that bread-breaking moment that caused you to realize that Jesus was your Savior? I would say one of the most powerful sermons that you could offer is testimony. Your personal story of where God came into your life and what God did in those moments is a necessary thing for us to go and tell, but when we don't go and tell, it's like we're hiding it under a bushel basket instead of opening it up for all to see. You know what I mean? Because God has given you that gift and that story and that experience for the hope and the intention that you would take it and go and tell, just like Mary went and told, just like the disciples went and told, just like the two on the road to Emmaus went and told people, just like Peter didn't go back to fishing, but took that experience with Christ on the seashore and went to Pentecost and preached. And 3,000 people came to Christ that day and became part of the numbers. And then God was adding to those numbers every day. I know that's a sermon for another time. We'll talk about that on Pentecost. But it's such a good story that we have to be looking ahead to what God is doing in that. There's something powerful about the go and tell. If you're leaving it just to people like us that are goofy and like getting up in front of people and preaching sermons on Sundays, then we're limiting the power of God. We're limiting the body of Christ. Every single one of us is a disciple called to be a minister for God and called to share. If you've had an experience of God, you're not a nut. You're not crazy. There's a whole history of people that have experienced God in powerful ways and have gone on to share it and bless others. How many of you have been blessed by someone else's story of how God impacted their life? I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those stories. Don't be afraid to go and share them. Don't let today just be another day. Another worship service to check off our list, saying, yep, Lord, I showed up for another Sunday service. Take everything in that Easter has to offer. Take everything in that God is sharing with you today. Take everything in that is telling you to experience, to recognize, and to go and tell. You see, this is a day of new beginnings, a day to celebrate and to share that hope rose from the grave, that forgiveness rose from the grave, that redemption rose from the grave, that love is alive forevermore. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go and tell the gospel good news at your family gatherings today. Go tell it at the grocery store, the sports fields, the workplaces, and more. Wherever you gather with others, be willing to share the joy of a risen Christ. Everyone needs to hear it. That's why they call it the gospel good news. Go and share that Christ is risen. He is risen for all of us indeed. You see, beloved, that is what Easter is all about. In Isaiah 43, 1, it says this, But now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Through the life, death, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, God is proclaiming our redemption and our adoption as his own. 
We are the body of Christ. As redeemed and adopted children of God, let us witness and proclaim to the world that Christ is alive. That's what Easter is all about, gang. Amen? Amen. All right, would you please rise and join us in our hymn of sending. Remember, we're going to play it through one time real quick so you recognize the tune. The words are different, but the tune is very recognizable. This is Easter, Easter people, raise your voices. What? We want to do that, don't we? Please have a seat. I apologize. I'm moving right along here. Okay, so folks at home, run to the kitchen, grab your bread and juice. Folks here, if you haven't gotten anything already, there's some juice in the back as well as some crackers. So please feel free to grab those and join us in this time of communion. I am so sorry how remiss I would be <laughs> if I didn't do that. <clears throat> All right. So I'll give folks a moment as they're gathering their stuff. So does everybody have crackers or bread or juice? Okay. Have that together. All right, let's go ahead and get started. And folks that are grabbing stuff, just come on back and join us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right to give our, I'm sorry, let us give thanks to the, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth is full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take Eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the blessing of the bread 
and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, we worship a Savior who is whole, but chose to be broken so that we who are broken may be made whole. Break your bread. Break your bread or crackers. Raise your cup. We worship a Savior who was full, but chose to be emptied, so that we who are empty may be made full. The body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for you letting him come to earth as the wonderful gift of Christmas, but you also making him our Redeemer, our redemption through the empty tomb of Easter Sunday. Lord, we thank you for this meal, and we ask that you bless it, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit so we can be your disciples in all the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, now let's get back to that hymn. So Darla's going to play it through once, and then we will all sing it together. Please rise if you are able. See, that wasn't so bad. Please have a seat. For me, it's not Easter without the Hallelujah Chorus. And we don't have a choir to sing, um, so I found something kind of special. Again, like I said, I want this to be light and celebratory today. So I present to you the silent monks doing the Hallelujah Chorus.
Not bad, huh? <laughs> Beloved, it's Easter. What a great day. What a high holy day for us in the church as a reminder that we worship a risen Lord, that Jesus is alive now and forevermore, that we are a people that go and proclaim, that we go and tell it on the mountains, we go and tell it everywhere we can, that Christ is alive and available for all. Spread the gospel good news. Go and tell it. Be the body of Christ. Be the hands and feet wherever God calls you to be. Beloved, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Happy Easter. Amen.